കർത്താവ് ശക്തമായി ദിസ് ഇസ് എ ഡേ വെൻ അവർ ലോഡ് സെൻസ് ഇസ് അനൗണ്ടിങ് ഓൺ ആസ് ഇൻ എ മൈറ്റി വേ ദർ ഇസ് എ ഗ്രേറ്റ് പ്രസൻസ് ഓഫ് അവർ ലോഡ് ഇൻ ദിസ് ചേർച്ച് റൈറ്റ് ഫ്രം മോർണിംഗ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് വൈസ് ടു ടേക്ക് എ ഡിപ്പ് വെൻ എ ബിഗ് റിവർ കംസ് ഫ്ലോയിങ് ഡൗൺ when god gives you a great blessing to move into this river of anointing it is a big blessing to step into it so if you strongly yearn and pray and desire for it you will be able to take a dip in this river of grace my dear brethren we are studying the word of god today's topic of study is genesis chapter 19 holy spirit took us through 18 chapters in a very mighty way in 18 chapters we saw a person with a special calling abraham how the saving grace of god came near him and how holy spirit led him as he lived his life a life where he went through many mistakes and blunders and finally reached spiritual maturity abraham became a beloved of our lord someone who was called righteous who was called the father of all believers father of a multitude of nation we also saw how god blessed abraham we read about that in the last 18 chapters now we have reached chapter 19 we saw what happened right before this last week three angels of god came to visit abraham when abraham was sitting near the oak tree farm of mamre when he was protecting himself from the sun he saw three angels of god walking towards him the moment he saw them he ran to meet them and bowed down to them almost touching the ground brought them home in a very respectful manner he also gave them a feast by preparing a calf and also got sarah to prepare bread for them with flour the angels were very happy and satisfied with the welcome that abraham gave them and blessed him telling him that he will have a son born from sarah when they visit him during the spring next year this is what we went through earlier in the end of that chapter we read like this since they knew that abraham will become the father of a great nation god thought like this should i hide from him what i am about to do now we know what god was planning to do the sin of sodom and gomorra was very grave and the cry of that sin reached the presence of god god wanted to check whether the cries were indeed true or not and hence he came down from heaven that is what we read in the end abraham did all the bargaining with the lord will you destroy if there are 50 righteous people will you destroy if 45 people are there will you destroy if 40 are there 30 are there 20 are there will you destroy if 10 people are there god told him that he won't destroy the place if he finds 10 righteous people but ten righteous people itself were not found at that place so in genesis 19 we see the angels of god reaching sodom and gomorra to destroy it with fire and brimstone this is how chapter 19 begins the two angels of god came to sodom in the evening and lot was sitting at the gate of sodom city gate because lot sat at the gate of sodom it doesn't mean that he was a security guard posted there if you read in the bible that a person was sitting at the gate it means that he was a noble person of that city noble people elders they sit at the city gates to pass judgments on disputes in the city if there are complaints or conflicts or disputes between two people in the city or between two parties in the city they go to the city gates to get it resolved it is similar to a judicial system very similar to a modern day court where judgments are proclaimed to resolve disputes so if somebody sat at the gates of the city it is not like sitting at a tea shop or in a place next to the road where people do leisurely gossip that is a very honorable position 
it means that he was a noble person of that city this also means that when he went to a sin filled place to settle down he did not just survive there he did not just build a house and settle down there he became a person who claimed an inheritance there that is the interpretation of that verse the two angels came to sodom in the evening and lot was sitting there at the gates of sodom when lot saw them he rose to meet them and bowed himself with his face to the earth lot did not get saved because of his morality you need to pay attention to this when fire and brimstone descended lot and his children were saved not because of the good deeds that he had done there are two reasons why he got saved first a poor person cried and bowed down almost touching the ground before the lord and repeatedly asked whether lord will be saved whether lord will be saved whether lord will be saved there was a person there to do the intercession second he was a person who showed good courtesy and etiquette while dealing with others he was a person who behaved properly with others if there is a person available to cry for you to burn in fire for you to get shattered for you to pray for you then holy bible says that your soul will not fall into eternal damnation if truth and virtue and righteousness and mercy hasn't dried up holy bible says that your soul will not touch the burning fires of hell hallelujah my dear brethren this person got saved not because of some of his good deeds or because of some correct decisions that he had made it is not because he taught the right things to his children we are going to see that later people laugh at him when they hear him speak something good to them this means that he hasn't talked much good before it is not because of all of that inside his heart there was a truth a good virtue a truthfulness in the book of tobit we read that giving arms extinguishes blazing fire tobit gave this advice to tobias he was advising his son son you should be merciful to poor people tobit 4 verse 6 onwards for if you do what is true your ways will prosper through your deeds give arms from your possessions to all who live uprightly and do not let your eye be grudge the gift when you make it do not turn your face away from any poor man and the face of god will not be turned away from you if you have many possessions make your gift from them in proportion if you do not be afraid to give according to the little you have so you will be laying up a good treasure for yourself against the day of necessity for charity delivers from death and keeps you from entering the darkness from entering darkness here it is talking about the final judgment it is the worst state that a soul of a person can possibly reach charity will protect you from falling into eternal darkness this means that if you believe in lord jesus christ and lead a merciful life it will protect you from falling into eternal damnation lot got saved because of certain such virtues that existed in his life so lot saw the angels of god he did not know that these were angels of god some strangers who entered the city few people who did not know where to go people who were moving around just like that lot was ready to offer them a place to take rest and sleep he got blessed because of the doors of mercy that he opened for them in his heart so let us always remember that till the time virtue and mercy exist in our lives we still have hope my lords turn aside i pray you to your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet then you may rise up early and go on your way they said no we will spend the night in the street but he urged them strongly so they turned aside to him and entered his house and he made them a feast now we are going to see the issue with sodom before they retired for the day the men of the city the men of sodom both young and old 
all the people to the last man surrounded the house the angels of god had actually appeared in the form of two males the men of sodom surrounded their house and they called to lot where are the men who came to you tonight bring them out to us that we may know them this is what is called sodomy or homosexuality my dear brethren there are four sins that cry out to the presence of the lord for revenge catechism of catholic church in 1867 teaches us that it teaches us that there are four sins that cry out for revenge the first one in that list is murder that is committed knowingly second is homosexual act third is operation of orphan foreigner and widow fourth is injustice to the wage earner which means not giving wage to a worker who performed work there are four such sins we read that in the letter of james chapter 5 verse 4 behold the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields which you kept back by fraud cry out also god told cain the blood of abel is crying out against you in exodus 22 21 we read you shall not wrong a stranger or oppress him for you were strangers in the land of egypt you shall not afflict any widow or orphan if you do afflict them and they cry out to me i will surely hear their cry and my wrath will burn and i will kill you with the sword my dear brethren i do not have time to go into this in detail these four sins will cry out from the inner chambers of your homes will cry out for revenge so this was one sin that cried out for revenge homosexuality it is dangerous to cross the boundaries of the systems that god established you should not cross the systems that god created a man and a woman decide like this we don't need to marry these are all things that were created by the society we will live together in a live in relationship these glorified names that we hear today this is not a system that was established or agreed by god there will be a cry that will exist on that many countries in the world today accept sexual relationships between men or between women homosexuality today if you go through the history of countries and places that were tormented with natural disasters and other catastrophes you can find the history of a set of rebellious people who challenged and toppled natural principles and systems that were established by god my dear brethren hence we should never attempt to topple the natural systems that were established by god irrespective of however intelligent or smart we are however great we become however wealthy we become we should never go beyond the natural principles and systems established by god so god's hand appeared against this nation and what did they do they surrounded the house and asked lot to send out these young men who had come to stay in the house so that they could have pleasure with them lot came out he closed his door and implored them i beg you brothers not to act so wickedly behold i have two daughters who have not known man let me bring them out to you and do to them as you please you need to hear this a place where god fearing people are not present a place where you cannot grow in the fear of the lord a place where god's principles and systems do not exist a place where you cannot bring up your children in the fear of the lord a place where the general thought process directly oppose what the bible and the holy church teaches when you go and stay in such places when you try to reap more profit there when you try to grow more in stature or gather more material wealth when you go to places against the will of god and settle down there these are some of the problems that you are going to face 
do not think that i am judging anyone here when i visited lot of places all around the world i got a firm conviction in my heart that kerala is much better than any of these other places it is great to hear that you are going to america it is great to tell that you stay in the united states people who have come here to pray for success in ielts exams should not get disheartened kerala is much better than any of these other places do you know why in kerala at minimum there are churches there is catechism here there are many retreat centers if your children really want they can grow in faith and know god when such circumstances and systems are already prepared and made available for you when you move away from here to another place for material riches think 1000 times before you take that step sodom and gomorrah looks good from outside the soil is fertile riches will increase they thought like this when they went there after going there and after settling down there this person is telling that my daughters are available they are available inside no male has touched them who is telling this their father why is their father telling like that because there is no morality in that place the winds of immorality of that place had blown very heavily into his heart and mind there is no surprise here the only surprise here is that he did not talk about giving his wife also into their hands hallelujah my dear brethren listen carefully you should build your families in circumstances where there are possibilities to know and grow in the faith of god children should grow up in places where there are possibilities to know god you should settle down in places where children of god stay you may tell that priests do not know anything and they will tell all this nonsense my dear brethren when jesus talks about the end times jesus says that it will be like the time of noah like the time of lot what happened during the time of noah everyone will get drowned when floods come it is going to come and swallow this whole earth when they were telling like this to people they came together and made fun of the person who told that when the son of god comes it will be like the times of lot what happened during the time of lot fire and brimstone will come upon this place and this place will turn into ashes when lot told like that you can see people making fun we are coming to that my dear friends when prophets convey the revelations of god there is no use in frowning at them or making fun of them because god will send his message through one person or the other if one person does not tell that god will inspire another person to tell it do you know if man doesn't tell it god will make a donkey to say it when balam did not tell god made the donkey of balam to tell it if one person does not tell it god will somehow make somebody else to tell it so there is no use in turning your face away from the revelations or messages of god let me tell this if you are in kerala and have only 5 cents of land and stay in a hut where water seeps in before you uproot yourself from here my suggestion is to think over it at least one more time people who are watching this online through facebook or internet this is what i want to tell you if you can come back i would tell you to come back at the earliest this is my opinion hallelujah my dear brethren what is the reason for that these are the end times when the final set of trumpets are being sounded we don't have much time left not even a second is left after the final trumpet is sounded we don't have time for another confession we don't have time to uproot ourselves at that time we don't have an iota of time left it will happen by the time we blink our eyes the reason why i am telling all of this is that this will happen because it is mentioned in this book and hence it will definitely happen my dear brethren if you say that father daniel is not standing here i can believe it but if you say that jesus will not come again you can't believe it because it is written in this book 
and only that will happen hallelujah after going to sodom and gomorrah and after staying there for probably 30 40 years this person is telling them young people do not touch the guests who have come to my house i will let you trample on my children how is that person able to talk like that the place where we live the times we live the circumstances around us people with whom we interact people with whom we talk over the phone their wind or influence is constantly blowing towards us do you understand be attentive to these things the order of magnitude is the same when you send your child to a particular school which can possibly take him or her away from your faith you should not send your child to a school where people talk and act against god do not send you will say that these priests can say many things like that i only have one thing to say ariyatha pilla choriyambam ariy when it starts to bite you will know it behold i have two daughters who have not known man let me bring them out to you and do to them as you please only do nothing to these men for they have come under the shelter of my roof but they said stand back and they said this fellow came to sojourn and he would play the judge they are suddenly calling him a sojourner or stranger in that land till yesterday he had a very honorable seat there now you stranger you who used to judge sitting at the city gate we were waiting for an opportunity to crush you you stranger now we will deal worse with you than with them then they pressed hard against the man lot and drew near to break the door but the men put forth their hands and brought lot into the house to them and shut the door and they struck with blindness the men who were at the door of the house both small and great so that they wearied themselves groping for the door now listen to this angels of god put forth their hands and pulled lot inside the house just like how noah closed the door of the ark they closed the door of the house then standing inside they said let these people go blind at that same moment all those who were standing outside became blind do you know what is the next verse in spite of becoming blind they were searching for the door even after becoming blind they are still trying to break in my dear brethren there are many people in the holy church in our families who keep searching for the door even after becoming blinded hallelujah what is a worser thing than this still they are blind even after that they are searching for the door they just can't pull themselves out of this heap of sin here it says they struck them with blindness it is a very powerful word struck they struck them with blindness they struck them with blindness still they are searching searching for the door so that it could be opened beware hallelujah so they wearied themselves groping for the door then the men said to lot do you have anyone else here he had daughters in his house other than them is there anyone else here any of your acquaintances any of your relatives who need to be saved sons in law sons daughters or anyone you have in the city bring them out of this place for we are about to destroy this place because the outcry against its people has become great before the lord and the lord has sent us to destroy it see here the sin that cries out do you know what lord did immediately he had love for his own kindred he had just finalized the engagement ceremony of his daughters had printed all the invitation cards and had booked the marriage hall and that is when all of this happened the young men who were about to marry his daughters lived in that land lot slipped out in the middle of the night probably went through the kitchen door since men were fighting outside his main door so lot went out and said to his sons in law 
who were to marry his daughters up get out of this place for the lord is about to destroy the city but he seemed to his sons in law to be jesting for 25 years if somebody hasn't heard anything good from my father and when he suddenly repents and says hallelujah the kids may not immediately follow him saying hallelujah they think that he may be playing the fool the language that he used all these days was different are you folks understanding lot probably used to fool around entertaining people he used to talk about things of this world this is a very important insight listen to me inside her home she used to talk only about things of this world when suddenly one day when her son started smoking weed she immediately said my son you need to pray you need to attend a retreat the son will respond stay away from me woman right from their childhood if you talk about things in the same wavelength tomorrow when you talk about spiritual things they will get it he went and told hurry get up this entire place is going to get destroyed today ha 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 another joke from you whatever we talk every day is very important how did you talk all of these days suddenly if you start preaching nobody will listen to you conversations between husband and wife conversations between father and children between mother and children when you talk about deceit and cheating and deception every day and in the end when you ask children to be saints it just doesn't happen do you understand i can quote examples but we don't have time for that today so they all thought that he was simply joking they asked him to leave after joking around he went back when morning dawned the angels urged lot saying arise take your wife and your two daughters who are here lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city hey there is no time to apply fair and lovely cream and stand here no time to apply the deodorant fire and brimstone are going to rain down so better run from here at the earliest he is still applying cream on his face trying to remove a scratch here man there is no time for all of this you can do all of that later when a disaster comes right at the doorstep he is still grooming himself doing all the makeup hallelujah hallelujah it is going to swallow you he is least bothered even if i am dead i should look good but he lingered this is our state so the men seized him and his wife and his two daughters by the hand the lord being merciful to him and they brought him forth and set him outside the city think about it the lord being merciful held him by his hand how are we all alive today i will tell you about my life I am alive today only because our good lord pulled me out and pushed me away from lot of deadly places or times in my life. I don't know about you since you are all near relatives of Saint Alphonsa you may not have gone through that. The mercy hand of God comes and pulls us out right when we stand at the edge of disaster. Because we were pulled away and sent out of the city because of that i am alive here reading genesis chapter 19 i think such circumstances are there in the lives of every person they said flee for your life do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley flee to the hills lest you be consumed there are many insights that need to be given here since we don't have much time i'm not getting into it this is a big chapter listen attentively run for your life do not look back do not stop anywhere in the valley run to the hills what is repentance 
assume that the place where you are sitting is the world in which we live a person who had his gaze set only on things of this world listen to me attentively this is not like sakius coming down from the tree it is important the place where you are sitting is this world in which we live i am a sinner my gaze is fully on the things of this world things i get from this world money recognition the happy gossip and satisfaction that i get from this world the pleasure that i get from this world the consolation that i receive from this world these were all the things which i or a sinner like me had focused on you are sitting in this world and i am looking at you and enjoying it and leading my life when suddenly the mercy hand of god came towards me and fell on my head in that shock i turned around in that impact i straight away turned to the opposite side this is called repentance the real conversion or repentance is actually a u turn turning around completely all these days he focused on money now he turned completely the other way and is focusing on god a person who was standing that side turned around completely towards this side now if somebody's gaze or focus hasn't changed they haven't yet repented fully their alcoholic addiction got removed but they haven't fully repented yet people who haven't changed their gaze their focus their perspective they may be singing and praising hallelujah big time if your larger focus is on this world you haven't repented yet jesus is teaching more on this in the gospel of luke we will go there but before that listen to this are you tired do not sleep off like this have a small consideration for me do not crush me and take away all of my enthusiasm sitting like this and sleeping you feel like stopping this whole thing and retiring to a jungle as a recluse so do not sleep like that hallelujah i am getting completely destroyed so do not sleep like that okay that is over for now that person who was sleeping got up just now so lot was fully focused on that land that is why he was told not to look back run go as early as possible danger is right there at your doorstep go at the earliest do not turn back do not turn and look back my dear brethren i need one hour to explain this thoroughly but we don't have enough time for that today if you keep looking back you will become a pillar of salt a believer whose gaze should be fixed on heaven when he turns and look towards the earth he becomes a pillar of salt so understand this much has your gaze or focus changed after all of these years has your gaze or focus changed after all these years my lord you are greater than all of this money you are greater than all of this wealth you are greater than whatever the world can offer me we read in 1 corinthians 15 19 if for this life only we have hoped in christ we are of all men most to be pitied if you went around all the retreat centers just for things of this world if it was only for your worldly interests that you searched out for spiritual directors if you went to churches only for the things of this world you are more pitiable than all the people who live on this earth why do we live we live for eternity for a heaven for our lord there is a god who loves us this should be the main inspiration or motivation or the main element that inspires us so lot is still standing there fire will come down brimstone will come down all of this will get destroyed when angel of god came to his house and informed him all of this still he was not paying full attention he was standing there dilly dallying they told him flee for your life do not look back or stop anywhere in the valley flee to the hills 
lest you be consumed but lord told them my lord do not ask me to do that i am 75 years old i can't run to the hills i can't climb malayatur hill right next to that place was another place called motamud i will run there motamud also was marked for destruction so are not motamud i told just like that to make it simpler for you that was the place right next to them waitinad was marked for destruction my lord i don't have the strength to climb kurushimala so shall i run to waitinad the angels told hey fire is going to come down there as well 16 tons of coal have been loaded to be thrown down there fire will come there as well at that time listen to this carefully the angels of god said okay you may go there go there so are the meaning of that word is small it was a small place waitinad a small place is it there in a map how much you had to search and pinch your finger till you found that place there are marks on the phone after all that pinching and zooming to get this waitinad on google maps my dear brethren that was a small place it was marked for destruction you should listen to this do not simply sleep off this place was also marked for destruction but somebody somebody not people who are living now somebody years back somebody cried and prayed interceded and when they did that they were told okay that place won't be destroyed run there the people who ran and reached there those are the ones who are sitting here in this retreat center today hallelujah certain places which were protected from being destroyed such are the places you run to to pray and worship god so this was a small city zoar they asked for permission to run to that place and were given the permission lot ran there the sun had risen when lot came to soar all of this happened in the night next day sun had risen and it was morning then the lord rained on sodom and gomorrah brimstone and fire from the lord out of heaven and he overthrew those cities and all the valley and all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground lot's wife was coming behind him when the old man ran instead of asking whether you need water to drink or want some black coffee the lady was going a bit slow one worry was about all of this makeup that she had put on and that will go off she suddenly felt a huge outpouring of distress in her heart whatever may happen i am going to look back she thought like this and turned around and stood still like that my dear mother do not become a statue like that run with that old man when the old man comes to church do not sit there looking after the cattle you will become a pillar of salt you too old man take note when the husband runs wife also should run alongside when parents run children also should run some mothers are running at a very high speed right in the front all the rest are tired and staying much behind they will come only after the mass preaching gets over in the church on the way to church you will become a pillar of salt be a bit careful hallelujah these people have so many doubts from the bible everybody wants to know what is the name of lot's wife there are so many people with real names in the bible first you study all of that a person with name malgo gogar do you want to study about him once a person asked me what is the name of lord's wife i replied shiny shiny yes shiny where is it mentioned in the bible he asked me i said it is there you haven't read it it is shiny i saw him going back temporarily satisfied since he doesn't read the bible he doesn't know that it is not shiny he may have thought that it was correct and may have even told his wife at home the name is shiny 
asking about all unnecessary things so this poor lady turned back and she became a pillar of salt verse 27 abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the lord which means the place where he had stood before the lord equal to the place where he did intercessory prayers equal to the place where he kneeled down to pray the church that was the place where he stood and cried interceding for lot abraham could not sleep at night he waited till morning and reached the place where angels of god stood earlier and looked out what could have happened to lot he was in terrible distress so it was that when god destroyed the cities of the valley god remembered abraham and sent lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which lot dwelt listen to this when the cities in the valley were destroyed whom did god remember did god think about lot no whom did he think about he thought about abraham and saved lot thought about abraham and saved lot if there is someone interceding for you even though you may not profit much from that person regarding things of this world still god will save you o oh mother who is tired and weary after praying for your wayward husband it is absolutely sure and certain without any doubt that he will be saved he will definitely be saved his soul will definitely be saved if we get blessed to reach heaven few folks will come to us with folded hands and will greet us saying peace be with you we will say i actually do not recognize you which convention or retreat did you attend he will reply i never came for any of those events then why did you come specially to greet me he will reply that night when you had kept an all night intercessory prayer that night you prayed like this have mercy on sinners who live in this land i came to heaven on account of that it is quite possible that you will meet a lot of unknown people in heaven whom you won't recognize people whom we do not know people we haven't met at some place at some time when we prayed these souls who got saved through those prayers people of god have this responsibility each of you to fast and pray interceding for your land o oh, mother who fasts and prays for the success of your daughter in ielts exam once you finish that the next two days you should fast and pray for your country you should pray for the holy church o oh, mother who is tired after praying and kneeling down for your children to get a job in a foreign country once they get that job after two days you should fast again for that land so that fire and brimstone doesn't come over it if there is somebody to kneel down it is possible that the number of souls that get destroyed could get reduced hallelujah let us stand up people who were sleeping will get a chance to wake up as well yes get up yes give that elder sister a hand hallelujah my dear brethren we are praying for a strong anointing of the holy spirit when we recite the word of god when we teach the word of god in psalms 119 130 we read like this the unfolding of your words gives light let us believe in that word of god the unfolding of your words gives light we read that in psalms 119 130 your darkened mind your house which is engulfed in darkness your marriage which is drowned in darkness there when the word of god gets unfolded light will fill that place that is a promise so let us believe that and pray there is a strong anointing that is falling on this place today if i talk about myself after i came back yesterday night i could not sleep at all i was in a vegetative state in the morning i was completely drained without any strength i was having no strength at all there is a brother who stays with me and i told him 
I am not able to get up from bed only. I am totally drained. I was that much tired, literally crushed physically when I came back last night. I could not sleep. But when the services and the prayers started, somehow i got a power it is not like a strength in my body because after the service today i will get back into that same vegetative state it is because of the infilling of the holy spirit and i can strongly feel that in my body the priest who listened to your confession today father joseph told me that he was totally tired and extremely sleepy when he came here however the moment he entered this compound he suddenly got energized i am not talking all of this to glorify this retreat center the power of the holy spirit is present in this place completely surrounding it we need to step into that fire the power that comes and fills us that anointing fills us so my dear brethren you should pray very strongly now do not think about anything else Let us lift our hands towards heaven close our eyes let 25 people around you hear your sound whom are you afraid of my dear brethren as the spirit inspires you let us praise him hallelujah 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 let me quickly wrap up the last part of genesis chapter 19 listen to me attentively it talks about moabites and ammonites These are two nations that used to threaten Israel throughout the ages and we are going to look at their origins here in chapter 19. Later during the time of various kings for several centuries these two nations caused a lot of harm and this last part of Genesis chapter 19 talks about their origin. Now Lot went out of Zoar and dwelt in the hills with his two daughters for he was afraid to dwell in zoar so he dwelt in a cave with his two daughters lot was afraid to stay in zoar similar kind of people resided in that place as well so with his children lot went to a cave on top of a mountain and stayed there so the spirit of licentiousness of sodom and gomorrah uncontrolled sexual addiction was present in the daughters of lot this spirit is what is described in hosea 5:4 as the spirit of harlotry there is a spirit like that the spirit which keeps you in bondage to sexual addiction and sin all the time the spirit of harlotry it was there in sodom and gomorrah the daughters of lot who stayed in that place also had the spirit in them So do you know what did they do the elder one gave an advice to younger one there are no males here let us do one thing we need children right there is only one way to bring forth children let us make our father fully drunk and let us bring forth children through our father himself earlier their father lot had told that he will release his daughters to the people of sodom and gomorrah so that they could trample on them his children are one grade higher than him when you share all this junk through whatsapp remember that your children also know how to use whatsapp you may suddenly get a shock thinking that and may even put down your phone i am not judging anyone but understand that there are a few things like that there is a letter that is still there with me that pains me a lot after a convention in patanamthitta district when i was coming out one young girl came to me and asked for my address i gave her the address she wrote a letter to me in that she wrote that she was miserably addicted to sexual sins in a way where there was no escape father please save me somehow please somehow make me come out of it in the end of that letter she had written like this do not tell my name do not tell the name of the village where i live do not tell anything by which people will be able to identify me but you need to tell one thing to everyone everywhere she told the first adult movie that i watched was from the mobile phone of my father i don't have to explain this further right 
I watched the first adult movie of my life on my father's mobile phone. You may tell that there is a passcode on that phone, there is a gesture lock on that phone. These smart fellows sitting right here in front can unlock any kind of gestures that you put on your phone. If you have any doubt, come to me after the service. You may have to wait for half an hour. I will unlock your phone and give it to you. I won't do it myself. I will give it to these children and they will unlock it quickly. Hallelujah. So, don't boast about the lock that is put on your phone. My dear brethren, even if you somehow lock your phone, you can't lock the spirit of harlotry, right? Will you be able to put a lock on the spirit of sexual sin? If it is there in your house, it will come upon all of those who stay in your house. For things like that, pray for mercy. People who have these shortcomings, pray for mercy. Go for confession, correct it and go ahead with your lives. Father did not have morality. Children were worse than him. They told, let us make our father drunk and make him lie down. Else we won't have children. My dear brethren, Giving birth to children or getting married is not the most important thing. Do not misunderstand me. I am not saying that you won't have children. You will get. Let everyone be blessed with children. But the primary purpose of husband-wife relationship as per the teaching of Catholic Church is not to give birth to children. Giving birth to children is the outcome of that. The primary purpose is to have a communion sharing the love of God. It is to share the love of God between a male and a female and the result of that is children. Even if that result does not come in a visible form, in the form of children. In Todubura, there is a couple who run a school. From what I know, they are not blessed with children. They teach students using a Christian curriculum. For example, they won't teach children A for apple, they teach A for angel, B for Bible. There is a school like that in Todubura. I was told that almost 250 children study in that school. They teach according to the principles outlined in Bible. And from what I know, the couple who run the school are not blessed with children. But they have 250 other children. Let everyone be blessed with children. Let people not be saddened. But it is not necessary. My dear brethren, listen to me carefully. It is not necessary for everyone to get married. It is not necessary. I have a friend who stays in a foreign country. She is not married. But she leads a life that is holy, prayerful, filled with God's love. And she leads a very noble life. She is not married. She is not worried that she is not married. She serves at the altar and helps in offering the Holy Eucharist during the Mass. And she leads a single life. There are people like that. They need not become priests or religious sisters. If people have a calling like that, they should follow that calling. If you are already married, you won't get that calling for a single life anymore. You need to bear it now. Father, we are also there, signing up for a single life. No. You don't have that option anymore. So, there are people who are also not married. Bombs are not falling on them. You need to have that special grace. But if you are tormented inside, then it is better to find someone and get married. On the other hand, there is a calling for single life. Do you know why I told this? Oh, we won't have children. So, let me get children born from my father. Then and even now, we have one common thing. People who drink lose their sense completely. There is no change nowadays also, right? People who drink are the same even now. So father got drunk and was lying there, having lost all of his senses. Both elder and younger sisters came and lied down with the father. Father did not even know. Thus both the daughters of Lot were with child by their father. The firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab. He is the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger also bore a son and called his name Ben-Ammi. 
he is the father of the ammonites to this day ben ammi let us stand now ammonites and moabites were people who were born of lot from his daughters they became a permanent headache for the people of israel if you look at the countries against which israel fought in the old testament you will see that the fight was mostly with ammonites and moabites all the time how did these people who fight originate they were born out of drunkenness let us stand up edunere 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 jumma jirichondi